She looks sad today. Just gonna let you know. Foodie looks sad. Okay, let's bring her up to the let's bring her up. <gasps> oh. She looks very sad today. All right, we're gonna go to 1.5 for Foodie. Let's see what she's talking about. She had a lot of health lies yesterday. She had a lot of lies about her health. So I'm gonna let her play for a couple of minutes and actually listen to her. And then I'll try to make a response because sometimes I miss some of her medical lies and she gives a lot recently. So oh, let's just get, get ready guys. Jenna, you're first. <laughs> Hello. Eh. Well, Liz, you'll have to tell us what the surgeon said. So the no notes are working. When not Jay. Hey, love the sound of rain, green grapes, Verity, um, Ruins of Coolness, Mimi, hi, Energy. That's okay. Jenny Arp, Marbles. You come back and Jam Jam. Okay. Sweet love. Hello, babe. Thank oh, you. Oh, foodie's not for everybody. <laughs> Brenda, Stephanie Reyes, Nicolina. Salam alaikum. Lisa P, Zoe, Silvayel. Hello. Thank you, Mimi. Thank you, babe. Tangerine, Big Dot, Bepis. Hi, Nelly. Tian Moonshine. Hello. Gwen, hello. Hi, Ava. Hello, Beezer. Fernanda, hi. Just Beezin. It's just Miriam is alive, that's all. Well, it comes along, Sanella. Happy Wednesday. Oh, yeah, it is. Hey, Anna, Sophia. Sabah al khair. Masah al khair. Tusah al khair. I don't know if I'm saying this right. <laughs> Sarah Jean, well, it comes along. Cassidy, Victoria. Lisa P, hi. Angel's Beauty, I am not going now. I did a video about how I changed my mind. Look at that pronunciation. <laughs> Rylan, thank you. My sleep schedule, yeah, yeah, of course. <sighs> I think my CPAP it's marker was Hi, Kim Richards, creepy comfort, hello. Come on, Fiddy, fit. What's going on? Well, it comes to love, little doll, Habib T. <laughs> She's crying. <sighs> hello, Olga, yes, it is me. Thanks, Tian. You said hi to me twice, you are special. I'm doing okay, Ageless Beauty, how are you? Baking and cooking with Georgia. Thank you. Can you make, you're from Italy and you bake. Can you make cannoli? <laughs> That's my favorite, one of my favorites. Um, Cassidy, I'm feeling mentally a bit better today. Yeah. You know, I feel better that I've made like a final decision and I don't have to worry about these, you know. I can settle in. I'm going to try to find things, you know, to do here. Maybe take some Quran study. Maybe take some Arabic lessons. Um, thanks, Fernanda. We're going to see. Hasn't she been there already for over a year? I can let you know that when I moved to Mexico, I've been somebody who's lived in a different country very far from England. And Mexico might be a country that Americans are familiar with, but when you're from England brought up like I was, you're not very familiar with a place like Mexico. And so the minute they offered us to have Spanish classes, I took all of those opportunities straight away. I mean, within a couple of months of being in, a couple of weeks probably of being in the country. That's what I'm saying. She just all talk. Oh, shush up. Looks like you just woke up and realized you hadn't made any coin today and you better get on the air. Because she's not even got food set up. She, look like, she literally looks like she woke up, still got her makeup on. She hasn't even bothered to get her hijab on properly. And she's just out here now going live because she suddenly realized that she needed to get out there for the day because she probably been sleeping from a diabetic coma from that cheese breakfast that she had the day before because <laughs> all that was was cheese and carbs. I mean, somebody else, I think it was Chikara, she also mentioned that, the and I just keep saying this over and over again, that the serving size for hummus should be about two tablespoons. And she eats that on one piece of bread. She eats literally her serving in a piece of bread. And she's it's about 800 calories probably going in her mouth. She eats thousands of calories. I think she just woke up and got on live to her audience. Oh, God. <laughs> Pitiful girl. But, you know, I don't know. Go. Ramadan's around the corner. I'm pretty excited mm. for that. And um, I'm excited also to bring you contents. So, yes. Excuse me, miss. Yes, I'm here to, to break up your boredom or increase it. I don't know which. Hello, Yema. Yeah, I feel happier today. Alhamdulillah. 
Thank you. My eyes, my cat. All the cat. Oh, I gotta stop fucking kissing my cat. Oh, that's why. Okay. Thank you. Has she a history of cat allergies to cat? Oh, <laughs> uh, I know. We just beauty. I'm sorry. I hope you feel better. I know what that's like. I just came out of a rough patch. Was that the diabetic retinol? No, Zoe. It had nothing to do with Salah um, or anything like that. I, I honestly, it's um, just always conflicted between both worlds. That's all. You know. Oh, and one of the things I wanted to mention that we didn't kind of look at, or we did look at, and then I don't think a lot of other people did because they were like, oh, because she said at the beginning, the wedding ring was off because she didn't want to get chicken grease on it. And we all had a poll here as to whether we thought she'd had an argument with Salau. And I think that ring was off that day because they were arguing. And so she was threatening something that day. And because her mood was being all weird. I don't think it was the chicken grease because she is a mini a meal with that ring on with chicken grease everywhere. So something was going on. We And, and uh, there was something brewing. Oh, look at, look at how smug she looks. Oh, I love that for me. I love that for me, that Paul's story. God, she's still swollen on this side. But I think she just woke up because she just got a hoodie on. So she hasn't even had time to get dressed properly. She's like, oh, darn, I got to get live, man. I'm running late. <laughs> I'm running behind. Yes, I am, Sanella. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I can't wait. Cannoli cake. <gasps> what? Imagine cannoli cheesecake. Hi, Z. Thank you, Ageless Beauty. I hope you do, too, soon. Thanks, Creepy. Oh, many no, it's a hood. I have an undercat, but I need to go shopping. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to go today to, to go to look at some uh, hijabs and make, like, a vlog of going out shopping, but, like, I can't, I can't get my sleeping under control, and yeah, I just wasn't feeling good. Like, I don't know. Hello, Capricorn. Hello, Kitty Charms. Hello, yeah. Let's just all bees. Yes, babe. I'm excited for Ramadan. Second Ramadan with you. I've been here since the BB era. Love just a sound. Thank you. I mean, technically, with her, one, she doesn't need to do Ramadan as a type two diabetic, and the way she's unmanaged, it's probably not recommended. She would probably be better off trying to fix her sleep, you know, so she's not up all night just trying to eat, but that she's just, you know, waking up maybe a little bit earlier in the day in order to eat before the sunrise. I think is they need to have it between sunset and sunrise and eat then before the sunrise and get going early in the morning and then right at sunset maybe eat and then try to get to sleep and try not and be up in the day and not go nocturnal the way she's trying to edge towards because that does really mess your body up and she's already physically a mess so yeah it's not, not, even not recommended girl it is normal i think not i think i realize that but i feel so bad like yeah you know she did just roll out of bed daddy a dfs i'm <laughs> good how are you <laughs> uh <laughs> I don't know. No, what Zoe, the doctor never ordered anything, him. so we'll see. Hi, Kiki. I look like sandworm. <laughs> uh, MRI bees. Hi, Caroline. You love Jersey here. I find the Jersey are like more comfortable, but I find like um, no, I, the Jersey ones are more most comfortable. The chiffon ones, I find I like how they look more, but they're not. I find they slip if you don't like tack them in place. You know. Hey, Charles Reed. Nice camel. Yum, dirty cannoli cake has cannoli filling as the icing. <laughs> yeah, I know, Ageless. Like oh, spaghetti meatballs, mashallah. Oh, yeah. Oh God. Do Depression is physically that, exhausting on your body, you know. And I see a lot of mental health shaming, like so much of it. Like you're just lazy. Oh my gosh, you have to do this. You have to do that. Oh gosh. Okay, victim. Stop trauma dumping on your poor audience over here, girl. Oh my goodness, you are very exhausting for everybody around you. And this has got to be about the worst outfit I've ever seen you in. You are exhausting about it because you talk about having mental health issues without actually talking to anybody, having any therapy, working with anybody, doing anything to actually fix it. So that's why people think you really need to probably sh hush about it, girl. <laughs> it's just it's a repeated record. I agree, though. Like. It's not shit. It's, so, it's almost impossible to do it when you're feeling super exhausted, but oh, it's like I kind of feel like I have to try to push myself to do things. And then, you know what I mean? Like, 
It's my second Ramadan already. Hi, just eight. There's so many salons. Yes. Hi, Melissa. Welcome. Kiki Ki. Ki, Ki. I didn't decide. Uh, no. Tian Moonshine. Do they sell linen ones? Um, I don't know. It's just hard to imagine that she's not even 40 and she's talking about pushing herself to do stuff. And and I think if you do have a life where you don't feel a lot of goals or purpose, it can be very difficult. It can be something that can give you situational depression. And so, but there's something different between actually having situational depression and having a major depressive disorder. And I think that's what she needs to kind of understand. And so her just throwing terms around in a blanket way and then trying to use that as a protective shield for her to ever receive criticism is not a very honest or a very good path to take, in my opinion. It, I mean, it's so classic of her to do that. But it's just, you know, it's like, no, you can't hide behind that shield because, you one, you don't address it. And two, some of yours may be potentially situational because of what you put yourself into. Yeah, it's exhausting. Um, and the hey, ghost face. Salam alaikum. Told you to have depression. Getting up doesn't make me feel better, but I just can't do it sometimes. I feel, hi, Heather, when I'm really exhausted from just being so depressed. And I know bed rotting is not healthy either. That's where I say I have to force myself. But like, you have to go through before you feel better. You have to feel worse. It's like, do you know what I mean? You have to be so uncomfortable at first. And it's so hard. Like your mind just tricks you into staying the same. It's really messed up. My second Ramadan. Yeah. So I haven't just. You are dangerous and should not be talking about mental health to anybody in your audience because you are not licensed or certified. You are just a bloody idiot. Stop it. You don't trigger warning your stuff. You're really dangerous, girl, talking about depression. There are people who actually really do have these disorders. You don't understand what's going on. You're just lazy, girl. You're lazy and you're slovenly. Stop saying it's depression. It's because your health is poor. Because you ate yourself into bad health. And then you sit there and eat a bunch of nonsense. It is hard to have if any sympathy for you, girl. Just terrible. Decided. Hi, Riley. I haven't decided on um, this the bio yet. I'm going to go shopping, see if I can find something like else. It's be off of YouTube. You know? In my opinion. Other deals? She's so I mean, dangerous. Know, There's Stop. a lot of deals for Ramadan. It was fit, so spit line. <laughs> Vitamin D, yeah. No one takes her advice. I hope so too, Rosebud. But unfortunately, I think her audience does take her. I was seeing a lot. So this thing has been coming up on my for you page. This 120 million dollar wedding of this like right. uh, Indian business, Indian billionaire's money. son, Anant. It's I forget the last name. Hey, Meep. Very Abaya. Thanks, Moonshine Molly. Um, Lynn, hello. Welcome. Vitamin, you can probably from sticking your head off the window. Yeah. Sorry. There's our emoji queen, Vanessa. Hello, Vanessa. Rihanna performed and she twerked. Oh my gosh. You know what? And I heard like they were, I don't know. I don't, I have like my opinions on like billion, super billionaires and like, if you put all the billion, even just a couple billionaires together, they could like legit solve all of the, like all of the world's monetary problems. I swear. Like $117 billion to me is like, hot on. I don't know. Hi, Elaine. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. And you legit, Chantel, could have afforded to have paid your taxes in Canada in order to afford your health care. Because that's how they pay for stuff out there. It's not free. Okay? I've lived in a country with nationalized health care. And I understood that in my paychecks in the UK, there were taxes that were taken out. And there was money taken out for national insurance, which paid for all the health services. So you and I, so I always, and the more you make, the more you contribute to national insurance. So for you to not even understand how your healthcare system is funded makes you an absolute buffoon. You're a buffoon. 
for their everyone oh, has their opinion on that. Food. They do do some nice yeah, things, but there's also like some political controversy I read about. But anyway, my point about this wedding is. But she is about. You know what I would want to do just to troll people if I was a billionaire? Oh, don't try to. I think I would have like the most budget party ever, like a budget, like low budget themed expensive party. Like serve everybody like a bunch of wiener, just wieners, and like McCain cake. <laughs> would you imagine that? That would be so cool. A billionaire has to do that, and just play like pin the tail on the donkey. I don't know. Hi, Crystal Tom. Chantel, you would be one of these billionaires who probably wouldn't want to pay their taxes or do anything. That would be even slightly altruistic you have not a seer you, you have no altruism and and stealing a cat off the street is not an altruistic act girl it's typical for people like her who don't actually pay taxes to bog off about billionaires promise you i don't like that group of people either too much because i hate wasteful consumption and I find that they tend to be people who are very wasteful. And I just, I'm not for that. Just, I'm, it's just how I run. I've always been a little bit that way. But uh, this girl is like, the way she wastes, you know, packaging and food products and, you know, all the styrofoam that comes through her house. Girl, be quiet, please. Nobody cares about your opinion. Thomas, a little bit. Thank you, Lynn. You're uneducated with it. You thrifted Louboutins from a thrift store yesterday? Yeah, that's crazy. Like a hundred, imagine a hundred. Warren Buffett's a billionaire and still eats that Dairy Queen, which he owns. <laughs> Capri Suns and Pop Tarts. Hi, Cynthia. It is their money. It's not their responsibility to pay for the world's problems. But Danielle, what? to me, it's still, it's it's unethical to hoard that much money, in my opinion, because they could easily give away half and still have, what, $50 billion, $70 billion, which is still unethical, in my opinion. I don't know. That's just my opinion, but. <sighs> have I thought about doing charity? I mean, I'm not a billionaire, right? So I don't have a ton of money. No, Chantel, but at one point when you had a lot of viewers, you could have done something really nice like All You Serious did the other day, which was give free memberships to her audience. She actually gave out, like, I want to say five or ten free memberships just to give them away. It wouldn't cost you much of anything, girl, to be honest. But you would never do that. You're probably the no name sending yourself your own chats. I need to give away. But yeah, I do. When I'm better, I want ruins. I've done a lot of volunteer work in my life. I used to volunteer 40 hours a week when I was well, younger. So when I get to that point, I want to give up myself 100%. And I do give what I can here and there to like some charities for like um, Syrian. Uh, when did Chantel ever work as a volunteer for 40 hours a week that probably wasn't court appointed? Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making that up. I have no idea. Her out here trying to make out. She did charity work and stuff. Give me a break, girl. You've been too high most of your life to get it together to get out there and do charity work. God, you didn't even take care of the animals that you had. If you can't even do the basics of caring for your pets, how would you believe that it? it was charity work? Who the who did she think she's selling this to? He is so um, full of it. Refugee camps? She I do give some money. Like, we give some money for that. Non Hi, no name. Non How are you? How are you? Good evening. Oh. Don't like him. <laughs> Shamrock shake. Ew. Hi. Do you feel the same about the Sheikah quit? Yeah. I feel like anybody who hoards that much riches, you know? But I don't know what a lot of them give, you know? So I can't say. Hi. I'm just making a point that, you know, imagine. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Good, unless charity work is shacking up with a crackhead out in Canada or shysting up with this dude out here in uh, Kuwait. I don't know what charity work you actually do doing. Because <laughs> you remind me of other girls that I've known in my life, and I don't want to be mean because I try to be very diplomatic, but classic that wouldn't give to their friends, probably wouldn't give a ounce of time to help a friend out really in need, you know, but would give half their money away to some dude who would look twice at them. It's the pick-me-girl syndrome. And you're full of it, girl. Any charity work you're doing is given to those catfishes. No, because like having all that money can change you too. You know, when you don't have much money, you think oh, I would help people if I had money. Yeah. But then apparently like scientifically, when you have a lot of money, it changes you everything. Go. I would help so many. Yeah, I would like to think I would too. That was just a pre-wedding party. Oh my gosh. Hi, Miss Mary. 
I'm not hating on anyone. I'm just making an ob observation. You know? Oh, the Girl Scouts part? I think it's mint, the shamrock, yeah. Oh, God. She helped homeless Julia and Howie. Yes. I don't care. I took those pets off the streets. <laughs> There's no such thing as an ethics billionaire. Exactly, Zoe. That's exactly how I feel about oh, it. God. Yeah. Even in Islam. She's talking about taking pets off the street. Girl, leave those cats alone. I'm looking at you, girl. Straighten your eyes. Those dead eyes. Those eyes that are dead. Whatever. You got the itches going on. That's either the retinopathy kicking in or you got like a buildup of like, you know, bile salts from the liver. You got pruritus from somewhere, girl. Leave the cats alone in the streets. Oh, my gosh. Trying to tell people she's doing charity work. Who's in the Girl Scouts? I was a girl guide. We all did some type of school charity work. That was just kind of what schools have kids do. That doesn't count, girl. It's the stuff you do when you're an adult, when somebody's not forcing you to do charity. That's that's when it matters. Or, you know, just taking sometimes it doesn't have to even be through an organization. It can be through other ways that you give to people. Charity work. Like acting like she's some type of missionary out in Kuwait. Don't do me a favor. You know, they believe that. So <laughs> I have very flexible ethics when it comes to money. <laughs> it's mint. Ah. I'm sure they do help people. They don't. But if you look at the state of India, Danielle, it's there's so many poor people. Yeah, I was a girl guy. Meanwhile, the ruler has like billions, you know. To me, that's just weird. But I'm not a politician. Hi, Living Laura. No, Vanessa. Awesome. Thanks, Cynthia. You're an excellent politician. Thank you. She said, don't you want to know how it feels to be healthy, slim, and feel free and beautiful? I mean, I don't have, feel like I have to be slim to feel beautiful, but I do want to feel healthy. Maranatha? Yeah, for sure. More than anything. I can't volunteer now, Robin, because I'm, like, really not healthy. i got to get a little bit healthier. Uh, but I was researching. Oh, God. Well, girl, why don't you just shove 6,000 calories of cheese and crud down your gob? Because that's the way you're going to get healthy. Why don't you sit there like a human slug in your apartment? And and shove cheese down your mouth. Because that is definitely the recipe for health. Go on. I I I I I I I highly recommend it because it seems like it's doing you a hell of a lot of good. For things I can do. Good evening, no name. Welcome okay, to the party. Good. You are priceless, babe. Thanks, babe. Absolutely. The buyers are perfect for hot water because they do have airflow, yeah. You can get summer a bias, so I'm gonna get some <laughs> chamois shake season. Yeah, Zoe, I agree. Yeah, that's true, Danielle. You can definitely volunteer if you don't have money. There, I, I don't know if there's thrift shops. Okay, but there's shops here in Kuwait where it's like, they have, okay, it's not like a thrift shop. See, it's like a, they have markets and bazaars, huge bazaars where they give away stuff. So yeah, I could take you guys there someday, but it's chaotic. There's a lot of people, you know, kind of hot. Yeah, I could take you there someday. <sighs> loyal Beezers. There's a lot of, I could. My Loyal Beezers. <laughs> that look funny. Yes. Cranberries and corn to perform at your wedding. If you I could pick people to perform. Yes, you do look funny. Oh, the cranberries. Well, I can't now, but yeah, I would. Maybe Bush X. Maybe silver chair and linen fabric. Oh, cool, moonshine. Hi, Crystal. Hi. Yeah, such a full of air. Oh, yeah. You got me wrapped up. around your finger. You're out now. Here in the United States. the homemade States. one goes nice. nice. though now. Tracy, remember for 27 months. I cannot believe this. Are you showing me these? I think I'm behind. Crystal. 12 months. And that's your friend. It's how we know Chantel does not have sciatica. Do we need to know more about the lies that this woman tells about her health and, and just the lies in general about wanting to do charity work now? Just, it, I don't know where she, I think somebody probably said on one of their channels uh, that why don't you do charity work? You got time or something. And so she listens to the reaction channels and because she has absolutely nothing happening in her life, and we do have things happening in our lives or have education in certain areas or experiences or whatever our niche is all. She then uses that to make content on her channel. It's wild. We, if you remember the, a couple of days back, we were talking about Lyrica and all the different medications for nerve pain and so forth. And lo and behold, Yesterday, she started talking about stuff like Lyrica. It's it. She she just listens and then tries to pick stuff up. 
and then brings it into her content. It's wild. So if you're familiar with other creators and familiar with my content and any other medical professionals who cover her and their content, then you'll probably hear it. It's wild. Absolutely wild. She has no personality. It's wild. And thank you. Happy anniversary. Ready, set, rebeast, Crystal. Thank you, Crystal. Okay, hold on here. Right. Oh. No name. Hello. Right. There. Right. Bees. And now she's talking about. Oh my gosh, you gifted work. 10 members. Yeah, thank you. No it. name. Wow. Right. Thank you. Welcome, new beezers. Who is a new beezer? No name is a beezer. Ghostface Gamer. Dear D. Who else? Hi, everyone. Hi, EF. Shakespeare. Yes. Thank you for the generosity. Wow. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. You want me to go somewhere crowded, Zoe? You'd have a panic attack. I know it. I could try walking, Robin. Crystal, DFS, Sarah Jean, Melissa, Crystal. Thank you. Ugh. Candace, hi. She talks about getting healthy, but she has no way to become healthy. Her health is so compromised. And obviously, we've been really lucky because I get some great other medical professionals who come into the chat and chat along with you guys and stuff. And we discuss how, and it's not to shame people. And I think that's really where I try to come in as a medical professional for somebody like Anna, who's out here like, oh, I should be able to have ate whatever I've wanted my whole entire life. And then the day that I decide that I'm going to be a distance runner and super healthy, I should be able to do it because I made that decision that day. And it's without realizing that these are often habits that are built over a lifetime. And habits take time to build, and they certainly don't take a day. And Foodie never shows any habits other than the ones that she's been perpetuating for years, which is sitting in a chair and eating. There's nothing, and ordering takeout. And she tells her audience consistently, oh, yeah, I'm going to take you here. Oh, yeah, we'll go off and see this. Oh, yeah, we'll go off and do that. And that's what her audience is asking to see. That's what they want to see. They don't really want to see this person sitting here eating. They check in every day and she makes these promises to them. But it's just empty. It really is. And I think that's where I'm surprised that her audience is maintained. Because I think that's one thing as a creator. Now, everybody understands that if you said that something's going to happen and life happens and it didn't happen, then people will be like, oh, yeah, I understand. But if it's consistently always the case that you say you're going to do something and you don't go forward and do it, then it just becomes a tired lie. And she is just filled with tired lies. Filled with them. And that's why sometimes I don't like to really declare to do too many things. Because once you declare it, people expect it. And now that's good if you really think you're going to go ahead. And I think, you know, people have used that to say when they've really decided they're going to set a goal. And they've let their friends and their families know. Or they announced it on a social media website because they want to be held accountable. And everybody understands that that can happen. And there's all people that accountability works. But she doesn't feel any accountability to anything. She's not accountable to anybody to, but herself. And she doesn't care enough about herself. Everything about how she treats her body, how she eats, how she interacts, says, I don't care about myself. Anyway, let's keep going. That's my thanks, no name. But that's <laughs> Chef her. Pondu. She's a flake. Yeah, she's a flake. Boring. Flakes are Melly, boring. You gifted two members too? Thank you, Melly. I don't know why I'm seeing all of these things very late. Thank you, Melly. You're so sweet. All of you guys are awesome. Freya, hello. Lumpy, hello. 111 Soulmates, yes. The dancing burger, I know. That's only on my laptop. Hey, no, it's raw tooth. You guys are awesome. Oh, Capricorn was gifted from Melly. Thank you, Melly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, El Petit, it's really easy for able bodied people to tell Chantel how to exercise. Yeah. Oh, I mean, God. I appreciate everyone's going to have their opinions. And uh oh, 
here's Chantel now suddenly taking on the mantle that she's not an able-bodied person. Yeah, Sandra, hey, come on in, girl. We we did glitters and lasers, and then we took a vote, and we decided to cover foodies nonsense. She sped up to 1.5. And, girl, stop it. Stop it. I have actually worked with people who are able-bodied, and you are choosing not to be able-bodied. God, you're pathetic. You really are. Stop milking. She's the worst, man. Stuff like this with her makes me so heated because she's so disrespectful to so many people. And she clings on. She's one. She, the reason why she continues in this manner is that she won that money in that case where she got fired from a job for being lazy and you are very fortunate in Canada, and she used her weight as a reason as to why they fired her, and she won. So she has used her size to her advantage for years. So it's it's to her advantage, and now she's wanting to use it to her advantage to say she's not able-bodied. And then these types of people expect very able-bodied people to put their backs out and stuff, to move them, care for them, dress them, bathe them, you know, do all this stuff. Well, you know, really? There comes a time where you just have to say enough's enough. And enough's enough. You know, but, and I appreciate your advice and stuff. But yeah, you know, unless you're really living in the person's shoes. Hondu. It's a Hondu from the past. How about a troll account comes in as past Hondu? <laughs> Instead of eating and talking, do a walk. Yeah, I eat and talk when I don't feel like doing much. The badge for new members and <laughs> Crystal. Oh, it was Alpha Alpha Tango. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that oh, Mr. Snowflake, that they had said that she'd won like legal action, or maybe I thought I'd heard somewhere else. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Even a severance package. Still. You know, here in the States, she wouldn't have gotten anything. <laughs> she would have had to fight for unemployment. But she just quit her job, you know. Yeah, it's not as easy as that here. Oh, I have so much to do and I need to, I have to clean out my fridge. Oh, here I can, in the States, man. Like, I mean, not just clean out the food. I mean, like, clean out the shelves. Oh, do you know how hard that is when you have a bad leg? When you have sciatica, back pain, you have to bend and... Oh. Yeah, Lynn, I hear you. Did she look like she had sciatica when she was waving those arms in the air? Like she just don't care? This girl has no sciatica. She's just selling sciatica quiet. Okay, Marbles. No name please, advice. Be happy and I will be happy for you. You're Thank you, No Name. You really sweet. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate the support. The disabled no, I'm not showing you my fridge, Zoe. You'll bark. No, I'm kidding. It's not that bad. It's ba basically just like there's not even that much in it. Hi, <sighs> misbehaving. Yes, babe. Um, but I got to clean it out. So I'm not showing you. I mean, maybe I could. I don't know. No, I got to clean it. Eh. Yep. Yes, Mandy. She <sighs> has done this to herself. I know a lot of you out there only drink Pepsi. Oh, have a look at this. What is that? Is this Aww. a corn? What do I need to do? What is it? I just notice. What the heck is that? And the lying. What is this? Just lying, like, telling yeah, you. Can you ask me a question? Place mats in my fridge. Ah, oh, I gotta do it. It worked. It doesn't hurt. You know I adore you, Chantel. Thank you, No Name. I appreciate uh -oh. that. There's No Name. Who called you a dodo brain? <laughs> I love that dodo brain. All right, Chantel, tell us something interesting. Yeah, it's okay. Other than that, you're stealing. I have a wart on my finger. There's gonna be a troll account. Chantel's wart. <laughs> ah, Maranatha. Yeah, I think when a lot of people actually like, I get judged a lot. Like most of my people who have been in my place. <laughs> Almost like people forget how hard it is, you know? But yeah, I agree. I want to feel better, you know? I didn't. I don't think I pinched my finger. I'm sorry, Chantel. I've actually worked with people who give a crap about their health and want to get better. So since I've had a lot of years of experience of working with many patients and, and people who've also received really bad news and young and who've battled to retain their health 
and you threw yours in the trash can. You're a loathsome human being who doesn't deserve much sympathy from anybody. And I don't have any at all for you. Because I know you're just trying to abuse every system. And you're going to get yourself in such a state of poor health. And then you're going to return your butt back to Canada and throw yourself at the mercy of their healthcare system. And which they're going to take you in because, you know, Canada's nice. It's a good job you're not an American girl. I got to get some of that. What's that stuff called? Not preparation age. What is it? Hi, oh, intro. Yeah. Sciatica. Oh. Pam, hi, Pam Anderson. Think of the sciatica. Going to Disney? Uh, she does I can't not walk have around sciatica. A Everyone knows this woman does not have sciatica. Yeah. She ran from that camel. Vanessa. When she needed. When I do I feel better? Not a fool. She's sciatica. Freeze away. What the matter? Thanks, Elaine. Waving her palm. I don't know, but we'll say that. Probably not true. Compound W, Rachel. Yeah. Compound W. May cause right, intestinal make bleeding. Or that. Ew, I have to cut my nails. <laughs> Just don't look at me. <laughs> what are you yes. doing all day? Yeah, Crystal. You it's can't not do good. A manicure. It's not fun. I don't even know when the last time is I went up a flight of stairs. I take the elevator. <laughs> Dip your finger in cheese in a very good way. It's just a blister? I'm sure. Okay, we'll see if it goes away. WD-40, carburetor fluid will fix it. <laughs> I can't believe I <laughs> took carburetor fluid and all over the stove. I am sure that the Canadians are starting to get sick and tired of people milking the system. I'm sure. I'm sure the healthcare workers don't enjoy trying to care for people who haven't really tried to care for themselves. And then you're expected to do more for them than they have been wanting to do for themselves. Because we have to be honest, there are people who are willing, willfully negligent about their health, like Chantel. Like this, this smug face sitting right here. This, this smug face written right here. Trying to let everybody know that she is being persecuted by other people because she is not fully able-bodied and that she has back pain and sciatica. Back pain, I understand. Sciatica, girl, there's no one who's actually given you a diagnosis. There's no diagnosis. You've not had an MRI. You've not had anything. You've no physical therapy. Nothing that you are doing that anybody knows. And even the Beezers who've come in your chat who said, this, oh, you know, when I had sciatica, I had to go to this. You are just full of lies, girl. It's your neuropathy, and you just don't want to say it if your leg is hurting you, which I'm sure it is. Gosh, I'm not gonna it makes me mad. Right, it makes me mad too. It makes me angry for, for the Canadians as well. Because I know that they're just tired of it, and their healthcare professionals are tired, you know. No healthcare system wants people who think that they could just sit around. She did say in her um, mukbang that in home, in Canada, all she wants to do is, like, nothing. Basically get high, eat, and do nothing. How do you expect to even have good health? You're going to have an event that's probably not going to quite take you out, but going to land you pretty sick in a hospital. That can land you months in a hospital. And as a healthcare and as a civilized society, they're going to spend every, you know, possibility to return you back to health to release you. And it's, it's time consuming. I had patients with heart attacks who were there for months in the hospital trying to recover because they had kidney failure along the way with it, had to have massive surgeries. I mean, just months in the hospital. And she doesn't care. She just doesn't care. And yet she's trying to say that she's the one that's being persecuted. You're full of shit. Pardon my French. <laughs> Mierda. And I start smelling something like strong, like, you know, paint thinner right. or something. No, and I was like, Mierda. what is this? This is right. strong stuff. And I saw the, the can. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> the can of carburetor fluid looks like the oven cleaner. Okay. So then I had to spend like legit an hour cleaning off the carburetor fluid. Then I had to clean the whole oven and stove. Going downstairs is fine. Actually, if you go down too many stairs, don't you feel like you have to try to think of how you're going to, like you lose, like you have to, if you go down too many stairs at once, 
when you first start going down, it's automatic. You don't have to think right. about it. But then you're, you have to kind of think about your footing when you do too many of them. Do you know what I mean? I know. Chantel is the classic person who suddenly gets a migraine when there's shit to do around the house. Like she did on that camping trip. I have a lot of girlfriends who work as healthcare professionals, very stressful jobs, dentists, nurse practitioners, cardiac nurse practitioners in hospitals. Both suffered terrible migraines. Both probably show up to work medicated with migraines. So I've had teachers that I've worked with that they have had to go and lay in dark rooms between classes, sit there and miss with sunglasses. And this this slug here, and I'm going to call her a slug because she's looking sluggy today <laughs> with that little head thing. Sorry, she's just with the head popping up. It's just not a good look, girl. Oh, gosh. You got a blister from, oh, from all my gaming. I game with this hand, Capricorn. So oh, no, you're right. I game with this one, too. She's pitiful. <laughs> what part of the cycle is the pitiful cycle? You get dizzy, yeah. I used to do that when I would visit She's my grandma. She lived on the fourth floor, but there was like two basement levels, so like six That's floors. Right, no, and she would get so mad. She'd be like, "You go in the elevator. I'll come get you. I'm not. You're not going up all those stairs," <laughs> because she thought I would have a heart attack and die. I'm like, I would rather you know go out that way than get stuck in an elevator and go out that way. So, <laughs> any new vlogs? Yeah, soon. Mm. Is that I have a video like probably has a ground late. floor apartment. No, she's a little higher up than that. <laughs> go down the stairs sideways. Oh, great! She's really? yawning already. She just got up. Shukran, Shukran Jazilian. <laughs> oh. It is one eighteen here. Well done, blonde empress. Congratulations. Julia, 2.20 a.m. in Dubai. Oh, you guys are an hour ahead? Sure, Jan. Yeah, sure, Jan. Look at that. Yeah, we have elevator, Mary. Thank you. Yeah, it's my Muslim name. Oh, thanks, L. Looks like you just woke up. <laughs> well, I did uh, a few hours ago. <laughs> on and off, on and off. No, he's not. He's in the chat. Rayo, would I visit Mexico? Yeah. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. Hi, Dave. Don't go to Mexico. Oh, my God. Are my Mexican chicas in the house? Donde esta mis mexicanos? Porque ese chica va a decir que va a Mexico? No creo. They don't want you there. Daisy G. I don't want you in Mexico. Thank you. Your videos always cheer me up. Oh, thank you, Daisy G. Way too much rice. That's so sweet. Thank you so much for the super chat. And I'm Mexico. glad that my videos cheer you up for real. It's 420. You don't need to be in a rice. Mexico, um, I think is a beautiful country, but I'm honestly afraid of like all the crime from the cartels. I oh, watch horror oh, stories okay. and I don't know if like I would want to risk it just in case. You know, I don't want to be in one of those films where people get their limbs cut off. Yeah. That's like my worst fear. I don't know if it happens. Like um, exactly what parts of Mexico are you thinking you're going to be in that you're with a cartel? What are... Okay, I lived in Mexico for seven years in the 90s, okay? And I don't think I ever... I might have potentially met a guy from a cartel in Acapulco one time. I'm not going to lie. But that was drunk in a nightclub with some friends. That was a wild night. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I was just dancing with a local and let me say I was suspicious about what he was connected to but anyway Chantel you are just so bad you come out with the most xenophobic and god awful commentary about other people's countries God, I, I, I know Canadians are not this, this ignorant, thankfully. Thankfully, I have traveled enough and have known enough people around the globe to know that most Canadians are not like you and that you are shaming your nation. I just felt that little, little maple leaf on that flag in Canada hang its head in shame as you talked about your other North American counterpart country. Mexico in such horrendous fashion. How dare you, you fat slug. Pincha gorda. Cállate. Tú no sabes ni pincha madre. Puta. 
Ojete, cabrona. Pincha pendeja. Pincha pendeja gorda. Like that. <sighs> no sabes ni madres. Higher no for you, Ni pincha madre. Stay up. So bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really, Danielle? Uh, yeah, you get some all night. Like Cuba? Yeah, I had a good time. I think it's beautiful. The beaches oh, yeah. are amazing. I don't know why, Loni. Just always is. Barbara, because I'm fat and I'm asthmatic. You're fat and asthmatic? That's Is that what she just said? Really, Julia? You're not... You're if, if was she saying somebody else that they were fat and asthmatic, or did she describe herself as fat and asthmatic? Because that would be about the two truest words I ever heard out of the gob. God, you're despicable. Pincha gorda. Oh, really? 22 years in Dubai? Wow. It's true. I, it's that's true. my way of getting over yeah, the uh, hard. fences. <laughs> I went down to a cavern. Oh, like a, why did you go to a cavern? You're in Kuwait, Mar Bryson's lab, Kuwait is one of the safest places. There's like no, hardly any crime here, especially not drug cartels. <laughs> excuse me, miss. Welcome to Very Important Views. Where are you <laughs> Welcome, excuse me, miss. Yeah, unlike uh, Chantel, Lilius, I uh, actually did take time to, uh, Lilius, I actually uh, took time to study Spanish. She says, whoa, that's quite a vocabulary you have, life. Yeah. Uh, I uh, learned proper Spanish and the cussy words also. So, yeah. Yeah. So I could, I could probably get through the YouTube census and just call her Pincha Pendeja and Ojete Cabrona. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I have I have a very, very uh, colorful, colorful Spanish language. I really dislike her. I do kind of hate her, too, sometimes, Kat. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, but, I kind of dislike her, too. Uh, no, <laughs> Well, thank you. You're the Dominican, really? Yeah. Creepy? Um, I, I wanted to go there at one point, yeah. Hopefully have a good time. Shiloh! Okay, Elaine. Have fun with Shiloh. That was easier than I thought. Hi, Angela! Oh, I've got... I probably no, we don't do daylight savings more here. more colorful. Like, vete a la verga, pincho mujer de la cagante gente. Chinga su madre, puta. <laughs> How about that? This spring forward I this weekend. Real oh, okay, so then you guys will be... <laughs> Seven or eight hours of, uh, of oh, time, yeah, sure. I love some, uh, yeah, I love. If you could do anything in the world, I, what would you do? Oh boy, I don't know. Pretty decent. Travel story. around and help Unlike people with like charities and stuff. I think right now. Yeah. I think that would be a good, how much good thing to do. I would feel good about myself stuff. if I did that stuff. We're not going to let her know that. Oh, shoot. Sorry. I, 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 I got her forward. Hold on. Let me get her back. Oh, I was thinking I was up a little forward. Oh, sorry. She was flashing her belly. Hold on. Was she flashing something? Hold on. I, I, hold on. I, I went forward. Sorry. Yes, I don't want to tell her how much rice is in Mexico. When she finds out that like every dish has rice, she she won't know what, what to do with herself. <laughs> She'll be rolling over there. But we're keeping her out of Mexico, so we'll let her have her xenophobic nonsense, so she doesn't actually discover what a beautiful, wonderful country it is. We we unfortunately Canada, we are going to send her back to you at some point. Yeah, uh, yeah, Brooke. Like you can't. I'm pretty sure most um, properties have to be owned by Kuwaitis. So I don't. I don't really care. I don't really. I'm not like. That's not like a priority for me owning a house. You know. I don't really. I don't really want that burden if I want to travel. I don't know. I love rice pudding. Yeah, so I want to make some. It's called Rose Halib here. <laughs> Angela, I'm sleeping. Yeah, he's resting. Oh, I don't know, Grace, which charity. I'd have to look into it. I would spread it around, I think. Nothing compared to St. Louis. Yeah, Steffi Walk. Oh, maybe, yeah, not Sarah, too. <laughs> maybe if you, have, if you have the money up front, who knows? Girl, you had money. You <laughs> squandered your money. I just want you well. Thanks, Noni. Yeah, I hope so. I'm going to try to work on it my best. Hello, Michelle. Girl, you squandered your money. No, tourists that don't serve alcohol here at all, Lonnie. I think in Dubai, if I'm not mistaken, but here, no. Well, Danielle, yeah, I'm a little bit afraid. Like, I would be afraid to travel to countries with, like, 
ISIS and stuff like that, for sure. But they, there's not that here. So same thing. Oh, yeah, no. I would be 100%. <laughs> oh, for goodness. Chantel. Chantel. Chantel is like having conversations about terrorism. Girl, just, I think all conversations involving politics, you need to steer clear of. No, I'm not upset with you, Junebug. My dog thinks I'm getting upset with her. I no, think anybody would be a little apprehensive, you know? I don't know. It's not you, sweetie. It's me. There have been like, um, there was a few, a couple Americans that were kidnapped recently. You didn't hear about that? No, oh, forget this thing. It's pretty yeah. Fall behind, yeah. Yes, there were. Yeah, but there yeah, were Mexico actually, is beautiful. And the it was a very sad story about two Americans because they actually were from Virginia that their their boat had been held um, kidnapped, and I think they the people took the boat, and the couple was unfortunately disposed of. So yeah, but you know, Chantel, it'd be nice if you didn't laugh when you explain these things, but you have a really bad habit of talking about serious subjects and laughing because you don't seem to understand this. You don't read a room. It's one of the things that I think you really need to learn to do is read the room. The food and the people seem really nice for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh hello, no. hello guys whoa my face babe it's the ghost of salah no keep the light off yeah oh mm. no, can i have some water oh i just heard salah's laugh that laugh in the background i mean i have a terrible laugh too but i heard him chuckling oh gosh i guess he's in there because gosh and she's having him show up a little bit more and more Maybe she only maybe she only streams at the times he shows up, no. so he can't <laughs> appear from the fridgey fridge. Cool. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> With raisins, yeah, DFS. Mexico's amazing. Maybe I'll go some day, but I don't man. That's on the way. Come in. Yeah. Way, how should I call you? Anything you want. Hi, Deku. Welcome, salam. Let me go see. Oh no, it's a lot of ghosts. Salah is gin. Oh, yeah, that was my other bottle of water. Yeah, maybe. Oh. <laughs> well, it's a good job that he's uh, doing the job that he's paid to complete, which is get her food. Maybe, oh, maybe it's a takeout. Maybe that's why she's sitting there empty handed. <laughs> maybe he picked up the Uber Eats. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why she asked me. Turn one light off. Can you start to do? Enjoy these things. Thank you. <laughs> Angela, no, I didn't. Are we hearing the door? He did. It's a grocery store. Thanks, hall. Cynthia. Oh, God. Oh. <sighs> oh, glad that she has more original content. Yeah. I'm afraid to go to like places when I hear that there's been an incident. Like even Dominican Republic, like there was some, remember there was like that big thing where like people were dying mysteriously, maybe from something poisoning in the alcohol or something. I don't know. Oh God. <sighs> Nothing against the country. Oh no, of course not. Can't tell. That's why you mentioned it. <laughs> even the Canadian travel websites say, like they tell you based on the region, if you should travel or not. So they're racist or what, because of that? Like, no. I have challenges to be a mixed weight couple. People judging Kelly, but other than Chantel, there's a difference between a country giving an advisory about travel to people who are considering travel to those countries, either for business or otherwise, pleasure, whatever. People do a variety of reasons for travel. The difference is, Chantel, you say one thing about a country that you've no experience of. It's usually something really xenophobic. It's usually something that you find not pleasant about that country. And then you sit and laugh about it. That's why, and it's not racism. It's called xenophobia. When you don't like another nation for being that nation. 
racism is when you're actually saying it's because of somebody's race okay that's very different from being somebody's nationality and the fact you don't even know the difference between xenophobia and racism is not surprising to me at all actually no, no. <laughs> why would i be surprised oh really stevie what cool he's a jerk oh absolutely I say that with my daughters oh yeah creepy sorry oh, <laughs> i think it's fine now Built up in there. Is Julia still enjoying her takeout bag? Yep. I still have it here. Uh, I, have choice word I can't get rid of it now, can I? You know? A lot of them, actually. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, Lynn, I hear you. Welcome back. Nassau is nice, Bahamas. There's a lot of sharks. See, I'm scared to go there because of sharks. <laughs> really... uh, Did Chantal ever get into the water in Cuba? I don't think so. <laughs> I can't stay on long tonight because I have to clean my kitchen. Like, I have to. Ramadan is coming soon, and I got to set it up really well. I haven't gone through oh, my cupboards, yes, like, properly at the back of the cupboards. Has coming. I'm short. I take a spoon and, like, move everything out in, like, a while, like, from before Canada. So, I don't know what's lurking up there. <laughs> Probably some old flour and baking powder. Oh, yeah. Live stream my kitchen cleaning. Yeah, she knows really about Thank the advisories. <laughs> Seems like war. Hey, you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part is the guys. Do you think we can listen to the radio? <laughs> radio. <laughs> His face was like pure joy when he was coming to troll. <laughs> Film organized in the kitchen. You cannot drink dirt water during the day in Ramadan, though. No. <laughs> so they all rip ears. You swam with sharks and they didn't nibble on your toes. Yeah, I'm gonna. And that's why it's not good for somebody like Chantel, as a diabetic, are managed not to be doing and participating in Ramadan, is because she can't drink water in order to help dilute those blood sugars throughout the day either. It's very dangerous for her, but she don't care. She, you know, and she's. I mean, I, her whole focus seems to be around the food and all of this stuff. And it's not, I think, involving the true and aspects behind that specific period of time. And that doesn't surprise me that she's not being reflective of any of her actual behaviors or what she's supposed to be doing during this time. Ah, she's Talk just Ramadan. so bad. It's just because it's nothing to talk about. Close face. I look like those. Oh, so right it's a real I don't feel like putting on a proper. I should put a. Hijab, I should put a poll about whether he is a pro. Which is fine. A lot of hijabis do it. Sometimes hijabis just grab a blanket when they go to the door. I'm like, <laughs> go like this. <laughs> you just have to cover yourself. It doesn't matter what. Laughter is the medicine. Yeah, I'm planning on cooking a lot for Ramadan. Oh God. Plating staples. You guys will see. Oh, I love cold water. Oh, God. I love dolphins. You're not I wonder if we should put a poll about what she's going to cook that's going to be so special for Ramadan. Is it going to be... What is she wearing? <laughs> it looks like she's wearing something to cover her head. And then she's got, like, a hoodie. She's actually got, like, two hoodies on. She's got, like, this this like gray hoodie thing and then she's got the cheetah stripe hoodie that she's not wearing over her head so she's doubling up on hoodies and then it looks like she got like a stocking on her head it's a fashion statement it's a statement it certainly is a statement is he really in for the long con I think he really is. I think I think Salau is in for the long game. And I think Chantel is too. I I I don't I I don't know if he's not been able to line up a better mark than Chantel. I have a feeling if Salau was able to find a female that would give him a call. And give him the kind of ability to free reign, probably the way he does, in order just to play a role of this, you know, husband and bring food to this person in the house. 
then until that arrangement, he gets a better arrangement, I think he's going to stay. Uh, you know, he might have already realized that he's not getting to Canada, but he's still potentially, if he is even staying in that apartment in another room, he's still having the ability to be somewhere better than where he was living before. Or unless he's she's paying for another place, which was what we think, and he just comes and stops by and drops stuff off to her. And that works on that arrangement for her. Because she'd rather still think that she's whatever she is, who's the homemaker out in Kuwait, <laughs> than, than whatever this, you know. It's wild. It's wild. So I didn't mean to. Chris says she's giving him money. Oh, absolutely. And he hasn't got another woman giving him money yet. Not to her amount. It's an unholy marriage of the scuba cap and the hoodie. Oh, God, it's terrible. Her face is, oh, absolutely pushing 500 pounds. But remember, she's only like 360. She's lost weight. Hey, I'll tell you. <laughs> um, Erica says it's an unholy marriage of a scuba cap and a hoodie. <laughs> That's what that is. That's what that is, Bella Italia. That's what that thing is on Foodie's head. We're, we're, we've only got a little bit to go. We did glitters, and uh, Foodie is uh, telling us about all the countries around the world she hates. Not a chicken. Potato face. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, I watched you for a few years. I put you first. Thank you, Melissa, for the super chat. Yes, I will for sure. Thank you so much. Thanks, <laughs> DFS, for being here. Um, Grace, if you have, like, a medical reason you need to drink, you can. Thanks, Nicolina. Hoodies are fine, yeah. Hi, Susu. Please do rough face. So we have a question here. And maybe the audience could uh, chime in with some responses. So Rick Slick asked, on this question, what the hell is the point of all these arrangements? I don't understand the scam. She's beyond a responsibility. You're better off hanging out with a pack of hungry wolves. My thought is, is that she's got a lot more legal stuff to deal with in Canada than, you know, she paid for her taxes, but whether she's making good on those payments is another thing. I feel like she's avoiding some of the responsibilities that she needs to be making in Canada because she kind of didn't pay her taxes and she hasn't done a lot of things correctly. So I think she says that so I think it's beneficial for her not to be in Canada at this time. I don't think she makes the money potentially to afford a place in Canada. I don't think she's, you know, she eats most of her money away. I think she's benefiting for something at, by being out of Canada and not being in Canada. It's certainly not for her health because her health is terrible. And she found a romance scammer and he is happy to continue doing the scam because he doesn't really have to do much other than, you know, deliver food to this person. But there has to be something. And other than the pretense to of being married, but I think she's got a lot more going on in Canada and that it, she cannot, you know, really, she's going to get herself in a rock and a hard place because that's the one thing you find if you've been living abroad for any length of time, traveling or being abroad or working abroad, if you're not really fully able to set roots, is that you're not able to start to gather assets in order to take care of yourself. It gets much more difficult. And then when you do need to return home, you may not return home with a lot of, a lot of stuff. It could actually cost you more to be abroad at the end of the day. You might just make enough to kind of keep your standard of living, but you're not really substantially saving money or making a ton of money. Sometimes it can be difficult to do that. Um, and so I think she's like got something more going on at home. Uh, Erica says, oh, good point on the taxes, legal issues in Canada. She's still desperate as heck for a man. Though his salary is it for at least now exactly so he's at least the 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 reason she can stay she'll put up with the the nothing almost like husband because it's good for her 
She feels like she's, you know, one-upping people by saying she has a husband, which, you know, those of us who've been married don't think that's a one-up always. <laughs> and Rick Slick says, do you all think she got caught up with a drug dealer drama back in Melbourne or maybe laying low for some shady people? Eight balls ain't cheap. Well, you know, that is, I mean, I don't know if she was good for always paying her debts, but I know for sure you don't ever want to leave a dealer owing money. <laughs> that's something you don't. And uh, I, you know, that's a good point. I think that she's got a little bit more happening over there. I figure he married her to get to Canada. I think he did. I think that is part of it. And then I think it ended up that I don't think he realized that she had two bankruptcies and owed taxes. And that potentially made it more difficult for him to be able to go to Canada with her. So he's just getting what he can get at the moment, which is an improved standard of living in Kuwait on her dime while he gets to play husband for her ruse to her audience that she got all this in a bag of chips going on because I think her life was pretty much imploding in Canada. And I think she's got a lot more issues there, a lot more issues, legally speaking. And uh, it's much easier because I don't think the Canadians are quite as tough on, you know, collecting their taxes just to leave the country and avoid it. It's a much easier solution, you know. And she just got out as fast as she could. I mean, I think it was to get back at Nada. But as this kind of persists on, you're like, why? Why does she stay there? Because I just don't think she's got a lot for her in Canada. Because this isn't a marriage. She's not doing anything in Kuwait. It's not like she's, you know, working or being active or traveling or getting to know the country or anything. I mean, she's sitting in a shoebox all day long. God, I would be depressed. That's why we have to do glitters and stuff on occasion. Because <laughs> I get, just get depressed. She appears she'll lose some of her YouTube audience. I don't know. They've been asking her, Pat, to go back to Canada because they prefer her content there. They don't like the Kuwait content because this is what she does all day. Is She sits here sanctimonious as hell, telling everybody how great she is doing charity work and this, that, and the other. Talks a big game, does shit all day, but eat and sleep. Just lives a fantasy life. She wishes she could be living everybody else's lives. She wishes she could be as healthy as we, most of us all here, this audience. She wishes. She wishes, man. She just wishes. You see? Yeah. I mean, this is just, there's so many different thoughts because she's not clear and she's not going to be. And that's what she enjoys. And that's part of what we enjoy is trying to figure out her narcissistic nonsense because she lives in a cluster B. She's very narcissistic. She's no person. She's like... <sighs> and if she goes back to Kuwait, I mean, to Canada, she doesn't have any assets. She got that old Kia, man. So only property. It's not like she bought a house, is renting it to Pete's, and, you know, having that pay the mortgage, pay a tax. She's no, she's just a hot mess, man. <laughs> There's a lot of layers. Yeah, there's a lot of layers for somebody who's just, she opened it. I don't think she has a, a bank account in Kuwait. I think you have to be a resident, Bella Italia. You cannot be a tourist and just open up a, an account. I don't think they have like offshore like that in Kuwait. Or Chantel doesn't have the type of money to get a bank account in Kuwait like that. And that wouldn't be the country. You would be somewhere else, you know. If you were rich, you'd be out in the Seychelles or something, you know. You want to be where there's Cayman Islands. Do it without water. I know you it's think you're allowed to put water in your mouth and spit it out this. if your mouth gets dry. Um, it's hard. I'm not gonna lie, but that's it's very important. Important to so like before you start fasting, you have to start fasting when Fajr comes, which is like around six a.m. Oh, or close God. to that five something between. I don't know. I don't know what time it depends during Ramadan. I don't know what time it will be, but um, you have to like. Make sure your suhoor, it's like your breakfast before Fajr. Um, so typically routine-wise, you would get up at like 4 a.m., pray to Hajjud, then like prepare. Right. And this is what Chris, 
Oh, says it's hard to understand how she doesn't want a better life for herself. At least in Canada, she was having fun, getting high, eating fast food. And she said that about herself yesterday, that all she would do if she was in Canada, all her goals in Canada are, is to eat, get high, and play video games. Sounds great for a 40-year-old female. Just sounds like very ambitious. Not to say that everyone needs to have Huge career ambitions, okay? I'm like semi-retired at this point in my life, having worked many, many years. And I've never been like like wanting to feel like I want to be the manager of a department of 3,000 people or something. I've never wanted to take on those types of stress or responsibility. Um, I've had enough stress and responsibility caring for sick people. So maybe that's not the same. Um but she has never even really had a career but content creation. And her content is not even good. Her claim to fame is being just very messy. Very messy is her claim to fame. And it's just, you know, she I just, oh, my gosh. I just can't imagine a life so devoid. Right. Right. I know. It's like all her thing is is food. It's just around food. And of course, YouTube has been able to really, and it doesn't help that there's programs that, though we may not think it's glamorous, for other people, that could be seen as like a, you know, a glamorous to them. It's like those 600 pound live shows and stuff, just because of the notoriety. And so it's funny as a society, how we've kind of heralded people who've really done nothing but put themselves into really bad health with, with, you know, and we've, we've, we've really sourced to put these people on something of a, and they've made a lot of money and they've been put a little bit on a pinnacle. And so TLC has a lot to answer for that channel's garbage, absolute garbage, has the most garbage trash. And it just perpetuates uh, the sort of, People having low ambition, low self-control, low goals for themselves. That's what I feel like those channels show. I, I just in my mind, because the people that they're not happy. They're not happy individuals. They don't feel fulfilled. So who are the meal? And have something with like a lot of hydrating food, like you know, cucumbers, hydrating fruit, maybe watermelon. Um, drink a lot of water, <laughs> you know. Don't eat salty, fatty stuff that will like make you thirsty. No gum, no. Um, and then you're you're okay. You you, you get you know you kind of just I don't know. It's not as bad as it seems. Yeah, balayada chingada, absolutely. Balayada but, yeah. chingada. People don't really typically hang out outside, Robin, in the summer. Uh, and it won't be that hot till after Ramadan this year, I don't think. <sighs> if you would feel very sick, and you would get sick, then you 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 can I, you'd be permitted to break the fast. If you if you feel okay, like you could go on, then that's when you have to endure it and, and persist. Uh, Angela, <laughs> he's in his uh, PJs. Let's oh my goodness! I, I mean, does she even know when she does or doesn't feel sick at this point? I mean, I can't. Uh, how she probably feels on a daily basis, and how some of you know m the majority of us feel on a daily basis, or nowhere can can nowhere be near the same. This is a person who probably has a difficult time just getting into a shower. So she can't even bathe properly. That to me, she's got to smell sour. I mean, there's stories about the fact that she's not very hygienic smelling. And I can imagine with that place as small as it looks and how tiny that kitchen looks, I, she, I haven't seen what the bathroom looks like. She must have to hook up a hose to the sink and get some plastic on the floor. And I can imagine that she's got all this yeast between the folds of her skin because she's not being able to bathe correctly. And she does get moist. God, from those high blood sugars too. Oh, God. You feel nauseated looking at her? Yeah, she's a walking time ball. Very swollen today. But she's going to get healthy. She's on a health journey. Every day. Let's just say. 
She doesn't need to be fit. Just sleeping attire. She just wants to be healthy. Sleep all day, bees all night. You know, you have to get presentable. Like, no, I don't care about that. Some people do. To go on camp. Please check with your doctor before fasting. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's hard to do, but I feel better, excuse me, when I do it. I mean, before she wouldn't go on without, I mean, she's obviously filtered. This is not how she looks. Even though this looks terrible, this is not her without filter. <laughs> okay? So she potentially looks worse. Ah. See, she's still got the cold makeup on. And, I, I mean, girl, the one thing that you, you were supposed to be foodie beauty. So the one thing you were supposed to look was the least presentable. And now you're not even worried about that anymore. God. You know, like, that empty stomach terrible. feeling? <laughs> Before you pick out because you're starving. Yeah, that's okay, Grace. <laughs> you're welcome. For someone who does manual labor, yeah, maybe they're excused. It depends. It depends, you know. It's a personal choice between everybody. But you cannot be caught, like, you, you cannot be eating and drinking in public during fasting hours. Am I getting that right, babe? If you get seen, I'll probably get asked about it. He's already left. We heard the door close. I don't go better without water, no. <laughs> I love water. He, he dropped bottle. the groceries off and he was skedaddled. I heard the door close. Hey, yeah. You want to hear the second most annoying sound in the world? Sure. Oh, no, he's still there. Your face. Yeah, that's pretty annoying. No, not that. <laughs> Babe, I have a question. Okay. Um, are tourists allowed to eat during Ramadan in public? No way. I didn't know what it is. Oh. oh, okay. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Babe. Oh, no. She doesn't... You're funny. Cruelty to my ears. Yeah, Bella Ty, she doesn't own a house in Canada. She doesn't own anything but a Kia. And we don't even know if the Kia paid off. She doesn't own a house. I said if she had been smart with her money that she's made over the years, she would have purchased a property and then rented it out to Pete's. And he could have just trashed her property. But no, she doesn't own anything. This woman doesn't own anything. Two bankruptcies. Two bankruptcies and owing like $30,000 in taxes in Canada. And she still has to pay taxes on what she earns now to somewhere. There is a country that is requiring tax payment on her YouTube income. So, no, this woman doesn't have anything. She doesn't have anything, girl. Nothing. So, King Beezer. Annoying. Yeah. Lies. <laughs> Are you a beezer? Just beezing, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that was in there, <laughs> unfortunately. <sighs> yeah, Ellie, no, you're not allowed water. Many religions do not drink water yeah, when fasting. Most people in religion do not drink water when fasting. Yeah. Yeah, with Islam, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gotta give us headphones. Hey, terrible. Warm. The emojis, Salah emojis. Blush Abaya? No, ghost face, you can't. Babe, what age do, do uh, children start fasting? After puberty? What? what age do children start fasting? Uh, it's like uh, from uh, puberty. From like ten. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh wow, young. Hi, Jamie and Camilla and Energy Egg. Hi, she looks like an injured turtle. Uh, she looks hair. like a turtle. Explain where the Miriam name came from. It's my Muslim name, Amy. When I'm I not quite husband. out the shell. Your rice portioning under control. The reaction channels are going to be going crazy about Salah right. not being in his own apartment. <laughs> Time to go home, babe. I know. She tries to threaten to do... Oh, gosh. She tries to do, threaten to do things to people all the time. You know, and I already told her that if she tries to, you know, say anything, you know, you, especially here in the United States, her being a Canadian citizen, it still has to come through the U.S. Attorney General's office. So it's very expensive and not, you know, very easy to do. So she can't really say anything about lawsuits to American citizens very easy. The only ones potentially are in Canada. Um, but, uh, you know, she's not even in the country to even start any type of legal action. And uh, I don't think she's got the money or the means to do, do anything. All she can do is uh, waste police time and more taxpayer money. That's all Chantel has as, a, as, as an option, is to go in months after an incident and file a false false file report that's about all she Pack her bags <laughs> she's a mess oh she's a mess <laughs> i mean it's not to sort of judge but yeah i'm gonna judge her because <laughs> i'm obviously a female 
who's not much older than she is. And so have not, you know, been always at a time when women were equally paid comparatively. So sometimes we older women have actually come up through some tougher times. And she's a younger woman who's really grew up at a, a time in Canada and, and certain amounts of time recently were very prosperous. So there were times that she could have taken advantage of times of prosperity in Canada. She's at that age. That could have happened where she had made enough money on YouTube. But she just, you know, she literally just snorted and, and, and wasted her money away. I hate to say it like that. But that was the choice of where she chose to put her money. And at the time, while she was behaving obnoxiously on live camera on a, on a platform like YouTube and making money for it, she obviously was making more money because her behavior was so bad. And that kind of fueled, obviously, her to want to continue that behavior. But the difficulty is, because she was in such a sort of wretched place, really, in her addictions, she ended up not, that money was just a waste. So there's people who literally worked and gave their hard-earned cash for her to blow on her addictions. And that to me is wild. That to me is wild too. All the super chats and stuff. Why you would want to get, because some people I think wanted to see her do harm to herself and enjoy it because some people just are kind of weird like that. But it's wild. All right, keep going, Chef. No, being fun. And then we're we'll throwing it on. Um, it has happened, but like after, like during Iftar, I've eaten a lot. You can be medically exempt from fasting, Danielle, yeah. Oh, thank you. You're watching your cats, cats, five cats. Thing. I appreciate you saying that I can take some time to take a break. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Because <laughs> there is a so, certain thing in our culture. And, I, you know, I'm in my mid-50s. And I I had my, a lot of my aunts had retired at, because they had worked for the city. And at that point, they had finished the enough years of working at, at, in the city offices or fire departments that they could retire. And they did. They retired. And maybe they weren't getting Social Security, but they were getting their pensions from their jobs. And all of those things for us are gone nowadays. Very hard unless you're in a federal job to even get a good, you know, retirement. And I think, too, like retirement, in my mind, is a little different because we're expected to live and work till so much later in life, like up until like 72. And I'm thinking to myself, gosh, still working 40 hours a week. I am, you know, just, you know, to try to get to a, you know, a certain, you know, bigger income to a bigger house to work more hours so I can have a fancier call. And I'm not very materialistic. And so I... I'm at a very fortunate place where I do have a prop my property and uh my expenses are very low that I can work, you know, part time. I can do this channel, which I love doing, which for a lot of people, they would love to be, you know, content creating or live streaming and actually having an audience. And I am monetized. I do actually do make a little bit of money from YouTube. Um, even with my small little channel, I do, I actually, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, it's not like Chantel money or anything. I just started, but I've been fortunate that this does give me a little bit of little side, side, side spindies for June bug treats and stuff. And, uh, you know, a little bit of help on my student loan debt for becoming a nurse. Um, so, you know, that's a benefit of the channel and, uh, but yes, yeah, thank you for saying, Kat, that I could get some time because I think knowing that we're going to live longer and stuff, I think if you do have an opportunity where I don't feel any guilt to it, I think there's a lot of things in my society that says I should feel guilty, especially here in the States, because people worry, especially here, like, oh, God, you're not working, you have no health care, you know, and that is so bad. It, that's one of the really tough things about the United States is that without work, you don't have health care. So sometimes you just don't have a choice to not work. 
in order to get healthcare. Whereas I fixed a lot of my healthcare concerns recently. And I personally will just get labs drawn by myself or I'll do self-pay with my providers. The dentists I never stop going to. That's one I always will will pay for. Um, so yeah. And then I can at least work still and enjoy my home. My home has been chaos, you know. I think we just overdo it, overdo it sometimes, you know. And I was definitely. According to Playboy, she made it. Wow. Mm, that's wild. Now, YouTube does take about 30% of that super chat. So when people send super chats, 30% goes to YouTube, which is why people sometimes do like the buy me a cup of coffee or do other types of tipping things in order to kind of get uh, Google's hand out of the money. So Google would have got 30% of that. And then obviously whatever remaining would have been um, going to taxes. And I don't know what tax rate that would have been at. In the same career rise vibe, my, own my own home with nothing owing, which is breathing space. It'll be setting into my 50s. Right. And I, I just kind of took a little bit of hiatus for my studies at the moment. And uh, but I have like 30 some credits. I'm a third of the way through my graduate program. So I'm not that far off, but it was getting really a lot. Anyway, can non-Muslims eat during the day? I think what they were saying is that if you are, I, I'm guessing if you are out in public, the correct thing to do would be obviously to abstain from eating because that would be disrespectful in that time. I'm thinking if you're home and you're a non-Muslim and you're behind the privacy of your own doors, I think you could probably practice however you eat, however you chose to eat. So I think that's probably how that, I'm sure that's probably how that is managed because I would not assume that they would assume that people are there and would have to follow the practice of Ramadan. Because there is, there's more to it than just not eating. There's, you know, there is very, and that's why Booty is so bad when she talks about this. And I, obviously I'm not of Muslim faith, but her focus is so much about the fasting and the food, which is a part of the Ramadan, but there's a reason why they do that. And that's the part, that's the key that she does not seem to understand or get. <laughs> Seven pads? How's that going, creepy? She, she just doesn't get it. Right. Oh, God bless surgery, Candace. Well, we it's not bad if they're doing laparoscopic. Yet. We can't say. <laughs> she has no okay, help. i got to get out of here because I have to do some things. So stay tuned for a video and possibly right. later for a, um, a Twitch stream. My Twitch is Miriam. Miriam, can you put the Twitch in the, in the chat for me, please? Well, Kat, if you're, the problem is in the States. Yeah, there are people who don't pay taxes, but it, it can't catch up with you. You do not want to mess with the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> so there are yeah there's a lot of playing with taxes in this country absolutely absolutely um that's why but yeah she's i think because canada is pretty you know is a pretty fair country you know she's not got the jail time face because she would be like in trouble with the irs big time in this country but I think she's Yellow. supposed to has a payment Yellow. plan. But Yellow, Yellow. What's this mere warning? On the plane Thanks, Sunny Lee. It's a whole nother story. Give her miss driving and fast food. Thanks, Dirty. Dirty. No, I hated those feelings. I hated that. I do miss now I know. She's Good so call bad. Story. Thanks, Creepy. If you have to eat Alpha, then you can eat. Yeah. You miss the driving? Her her eyes. This is <laughs> eyes. To go to your apartment. We used to wear glasses. Just the third one. Glasses. He has one in every province here. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be told. Him. By the way, Anashi, let me tell you why it's no, no, cat. Chicken see, patty, which is all threaten, white breast meat, never any hard things in it, never grizzle, just perfect. No, cat. See, she didn't threaten to see me, but she started to talk about my channel and me not really being a nurse and stuff. But I know that Chantel just loves to throw out stuff about suing and laws and stalking and stuff. So I just basically let her know oh, that 
any type of lawsuit has to go through the U.S. Attorney General's office. So good luck with that. <laughs> just to let her know yeah, guys, that it's there's, fried there's to no perfection and dipped in the most delicious sauce I've ever had. So I'm never okay? going to be scared by and that. And it's just the right amount of spicy. And then the brioche bun is like soft that. and sweet, a little bit sweet. Like we have too many attorney friends. And they put mayo, and Burger King mayo is amazing. It's tangy and salty. And then the Burger King pickles, in my opinion, are the best fast food pickles ever. Wendy's is the least best. But yeah. So the Nashi is amazing. But I am boycotting Burger King. <laughs> Bailey Brooke, welcome to Grand Party. Oh. There's the sciatica. Um, girl, are you sitting, seriously sitting here talking about pickles? <laughs> right. I was, uh, how I wouldn't have put it past her to narc on dealers. Oh, she probably threatened some dealers too. I wouldn't be so sure. Yeah, she can only talk about food and pickles, surprisingly. And look at that sciatica in action. She just waves those arms in the air like she just don't care. Come on, Chantel, finish us out. We're almost done. <laughs> well, I'll let you go because we've been here for a while. Tonight. Did you ever meet anyone weird as me before you met me? <laughs> no, right, babe? Please start driving around with the baby car seat in your backseat just to mess with people. Babe, good idea. <laughs> we should what? get a, you know, like those little seats that they put babies in the backseat of cars? Oh, we should get one just to mess with people. Oh, <laughs> and put Julia, put Julia in it. Dirtiest, grimiest, takeaway places here in the U.S. Imagine buying a whole seat for himself. He does have a big butt. Teardrop! One of your daughter's birthday. Oh, yes! Please wish her happy birthday! I guess that she had to start filming. I, you know what I think happened? Is that she woke up because she knew that Salah was going to get groceries. I still don't think he stays there. And I think he then stayed and he's contractually obligated to talk on her live. So she had to get cam up and get live. That's why she's got no food out. And then he's just coming out to do the grocery haul and drop off. And because I think the other time when he did a the grocery, she did the grocery haul, I think she caught him with Howie. So I feel like she gets him talking when he's dropping the food off. Hey. What a Yes, have fun here, Drop. Don't worry about it. Thanks for popping in. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, little Beezer. Right. How do I feel about Egypt? I like every country. I don't like, you know, I'm just like paranoid with certain things. I was paranoid about Cuba too as well, actually. I don't know why. I just was. But Egypt, I wouldn't go by myself. That's for sure. I would go with uh, my husband, yeah. You know, I just hear some people can be pushy about selling things. And I, you know how I am. I have a hard time like asserting myself when people ask me for stuff. <laughs> But Salah's Arabic, and he... I'm fine. I'm cool. Thank you. <laughs> How would you say that in Arabic, like, for someone to, like... Lala shukran. Mafidai. Mafidai? What does that mean? Mafidai. Lala shukran. Mafidai. I can practice that. Lala shukran. She doesn't even know how to say no thank you yet in Arabic? Wouldn't that be, like, the basics that you would learn? It's like, hi, hello, how are you? Yes, no, thank you, no thank you. I would have thought that it would have been like just the basics, just for courtesy. <laughs> He's so lazy. I see her Salah again. Yeah, so I did. Sweet so love. Lazy. <laughs> Can Salah come on camera? Thank you, no. <laughs> Salah doesn't what? Like come on camera. She's in her cagey cage? Yeah. <laughs> Julia, where's Julia? I'm seeing Julia today. I want to show her. Should I show her? Give me the whole cage. I'll carry it. Oh, <laughs> oh guys. Poor Howie. <laughs> What are you doing in here? You want to go get oh, your nails cut? Julia. <laughs> Say hi. Stop She's like, what's happening here? Why are you fat? Too much tuna and chicken. Put the cat down. Hey. Oh, God. She's heavy. Good. Say hi. Why does she do the worst thing to animals, man? Poor cat. Try to get some respite in the in the crate away from this blob. Just. Just stop it. God, she's a horrible human being. Okay. Oh, no, she's freaking heavy. <laughs> yes, baby, yep. Fine. Fine. You're in prison. Fine. Uh, hard Where's she going? She's hurting herself. Is I the know. Door open? Yeah. <laughs> it's your job. She's a queen. She's a princess. I know. She's your cozy. Here. Yeah. She's trying to cozy house. Cozy, cozy cage. I should get turkey teeth. Yeah. People go to Turkey and get like cheap and uh, not, no, they're not cheap. They're horrible. Get them out um, of there. Teeth crowns. I could never shave my little teeth, my teeth down like that. That freaks me out. 
Yes, to you, Sam. Oh, God. Yeah, my eyes are always watery. Yeah, she's an effing girl. Miriam, you know I adore you, so this is 100%. I don't want to grow Yeah. No, Megan, it's because of my uh, allergies. Yeah. She was seriously eyes. shaking the cat's cage, Des. Yeah, Mary. I would like to visit Egypt. That was Hello. going to get away from Big girl. madness. Yeah. Okay. What they do a lot in Turkey, they don't put spaces, and then you get bacteria and infection. Just No, I wouldn't do it. I'll take my irregular, ugly teeth over that any day. <laughs> girl, your teeth look like they're getting bacteria and infection at your gum line, and you're going to give yourself endocarditis. I'm just giving you a heads up. Because your your teeth, you don't even see a dentist. Don't even but to each their own. I mean, they don't look too bad. She, she's talking about. All right, I gotta go because we're probably gonna be, uh, I gotta go and like, do that. She's gonna glow up with the veneers. Uh, we're getting like a. Because she has the teeth of manky. So long. <laughs> like a flipper. Five more days till Ramadan. Are you gonna do Ramadan ghost face? Clip on veneers, Crystal? Really? I don't have a good teeth. Thank you. Just oh. Uh. <sighs> Now we enter the 7th of March. <laughs> so after three or four days. Yeah. My birthday is during Ramadan. That's so special. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be in the last uh, 10 days of Ramadan. Yeah. The whole 10 days. Meep, yes. I will be doing Twitch later. Miriam plays games as my Twitch. Oh, I forget to put your link. Oh, thanks. Ramadan Kareem. <laughs> Bye, teardrop. You're Kermit the Hermit, Anna? Okay. Diva. Hello, Diva. Thank you. I'm feeling a lot better today. This is my eighth bottle of water. And that's the thing too. So Kat C about having Kat C says here we're about to finish up, but we feel like we need to explain what we are worth. I understand. I did have to do a lot of the healthcare on my own weird ways. School, for example, kept me sometimes insured. And I know when I was working as a when I was starting to be an RN and I was working as a nanny, I didn't have health insurance. I had to use the uh public health services in the city to get vaccinations for school i used to get my but i had annual checkups there because i was i did show that i was low income um at the time so i was actually able to get health services so i just had to wait longer didn't feel great obviously you feel like you're you know a failure in some ways because you're having to use public health services and stuff but at the time, I was like, at least I can get access to public health services. It's a way to get to my nursing career. There's a lot of things, especially here in the U.S. I don't think that, you know, those of our, you know, community members who are living in countries where there is access to public, you know, health through national insurance, like I was familiar with, with having in the U.K. And coming into a system like the U.S. that has been changing drastically over the last 20 years. And it's not even the healthcare that our grandparents saw while they were working. Just the out-of-pocket costs, I mean, it's just outrageous. The amount of money I spent between surgeries and procedures and things that I needed to get done to help me breathe properly, to stop my legs from having pain and having to have worse issues in um, varicosities, varicose veins in the future. So I was trying to get things taken care of early. And I spent a lot of money. It was very expensive. And the US, there's so much worth put to what you do for work and how much money you make and this, that and the other. And I think it's, especially with our older generations, I think the younger generations are becoming more and more exhausted by it. Because the cost of living, I found out, and I'll just finish it up, um, about my hometown, they were saying, just to buy a home now, since 2020, the cost of the housing, I think, across the board for everybody, I saw, it's just gone up exponentially. But they said here for Virginia Beach, to buy a home, a starter home, your income needs to be $102,000 a year. $102,000 a year. And I can promise you the average salary in Virginia Beach is not $102,000 a year. So that pretty much also says right there, unless you're a dual income family, you're, and you're alone, like someone like me, the chances of me buying a property as a single female in this day and age, unless you've really got a very well-to-do family 
and they're going to give you the down deposit. It's very hard to near impossible. And I think it's really tough. So I think we need to kind of not be so hard on ourselves. I think a lot of us have achieved a lot that our younger generations may not even achieve what we achieved. So we're, I think, in a very fortunate place, much more fortunate than some of our younger ones. You're in California, make really good money. You need a solid 300K for a house. I guess that's, a, that's an income, 300K. Or is that for the down? Because I'm thinking that's almost like the salary. And in order to really afford a house in California and not to be house poor. Because on top of it, you still need often the car payments, the student loan debt payments, the car insurance, the food, electricity, <laughs> internet, phone. I mean, the list of all the extras that we have that were bills that my grandmother never had to pay. It's wild, wild. Making two people making about 600. Yeah. Okay. It, it was income. Yes. Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? I can't, I don't think that some people in, in, especially in the UK or places can imagine that you need to be making close to $300,000 to think about purchasing a house. That's more than some doctors make on family practice. I, that's just such huge sums of money. It's very inflationary to my mind. When you start thinking about those types of incomes, because I remember, you know, not even 30 years ago, somebody making 60K was a good income. Now, if you're not even making 100 People are like, oh, I have friends, you know, it's just terror. It's just wild, wild. I, it sucks. It was four, well, just in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm so sorry, Paris. I know. And I can promise you, Virginia Beach isn't getting much better, girl, on the East Coast. It's not much better over on this side. It's not quite California. But I tell you that. Here in Virginia, man, and in Canada and Australia, I heard it's even worse. I mean, like, for the young people, the, the place in front of me, like, they rent. My condo would rent for $1,700 a month, and I still can't believe that. Anyway, let's finish out Miriam. She doesn't even have a house to talk about. Birthday camping? Oh, yeah, inshallah. Love you both. Wonderful couple always. Thank you, Croons, Loins. Okay. It, I don't want anything from the drink in public. That's why I, I was don't know. It has to be public. <laughs> just kidding. Okay. Money. And tell me the card with lots of money in it. Do you guys ever do that? Hi, Laurel. Bye, Laurel. Do you guys ever do that? Get birthday cards or Christmas cards? There's my Twitch, okay? Why? Plays games. It's, it's pinned. <laughs> and then you're like, does this card feel heavy? I mean, that's the thing. In California, they do get paid well, but then there comes a point where then everything else raises against it. So even then, your pay doesn't feel like you're getting paid well enough. Like, I mean, I was, you know, obviously, you know, as an RN, I'm, I can easily pick up contracts and make very good money very quick. I mean, it's just a benefit of having years of experience in my profession and the type of profession that I do. And that was a choice. I knew when I came into nursing, that was, you know, one of the things about being here in the States and being a nurse is it's very well paid and you can you know, maintain your license and come in and out. But even as a nurse, you know, you'd be living in your, your van outside the hospital on that, you know, type of California money. <laughs> and you have to pretend like you don't see the money when you're opening the card. It's just like all this money falls out and you're still reading the card. Oh, cool. You're oh, yeah, this is <laughs> you ever do that? <laughs> I'm joking, guys. I mean, I did do that with cards, of course, like right. when I was in spoiled days. Right. But now, honestly, when I was a kid, that meant more to me, the money in the card. I didn't care about the message. Now, having a card with a sweet message, personalized, is more valuable, you know? Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, I don't think people do. Awesome. Do, people give, do they have Hallmark here? I don't even know. Whenever someone has, you don't celebrate birthdays really in Islam, eh? Not too much. I don't know. It's different. I'm not sure. I don't know. My girlfriend, Najma, who's a Muslim, she loved to do, like, big birthdays. I, I mean... I don't, I don't know. She makes some blanket well, statements. This is what it looks like, just to uh, spread the happiness. Uh, okay. Like in, like in uh, Islam, no? Oh, okay. 
I gotta go, guys, because uh, I gotta do a grocery haul. <laughs> okay, I'll see you after. I'm gonna do the haul, and then I'm gonna do a Twitch stream. So I'll announce on my community post when I'm gonna do it. So stay tuned, okay? Thanks for being. Thank you very much for everybody for your generosity, and I'll see you in the next wow, stream. Too fast. <laughs> <laughs> I could, yeah, I'm working at an auction. Okay, guys, see you. Bye, bye, guys. Bye. Masalama. Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. So she didn't really say much of anything, except her usual continuation with the lies, acting like I guess you know Salal did whatever to make her happy, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Something happened. Because remember we talked about the ring went missing. Well, the ring was off one day. Then her mood went all down. She told, told she was going back to Canada. And now Salal's back and they're all laughing and stuff. So I don't know. She obviously, they obviously, something went down there for a minute. <laughs> So that's good. Chantel will continue to sit. And let's see how big she gets over Ramadan. How many pounds do you think she's going to gain over Ramadan? Oh, my goodness. And she can't even buy a house in Kuwait because she's a, not a Kuwait national. And that happens in, in often in countries like countries like Mexico. I believe there are certain um, restrictions about people from outside of, you know, Mexico purchasing certain put pieces of land and stuff and you know so i mean it's not just she makes like she just anyway you, you out in montana oh yeah montana all the west coast here in the united states is just outrageous and i know australia is very expensive too i saw this poor girl on youtube today and she had been living in the same house forever and she finally got a letter from her landlord or somebody to say that she was not going to be able to you know, stay in the house that you know, I guess they were looking to sell or whatever reason. And uh, she was now stuck with the having to try to find a home in a really impossible market of very overpriced housing in the very and there's not much out there. you know and unfortunately we do have a culture that tells young people that they're failures if they don't buy property at a very young age. And I think we do need to kind of figure out how we're going to present that in our culture because housing is absolutely outrageous. I mean, I don't know. When I bought my condo, I was making $27,000 a year. I was able to put like $12,000 down and buy a condo for eighty two five, dollars And that was like right near a beach. You know, I mean... And that was like 21 years ago. And so I, the chances, and now I think this condo sells close to 300,000. So, and the condo fees are as much as my mortgage were. So it's like, I just think I feel bad. I feel bad. I, I do too. I do too. New Zealand is bright the roof too. I could never go back to the market again. I had, oh. Wow, 900,000. Well, I can let you know here at the oceanfront Virginia Beach and in, in the areas that I live, you know, the, the homes around me, and I cannot believe it. They're about, and this is not the rich, I mean, I'm in a nice part of the, the oceanfront, obviously, but there's different sections like the country club section, you know, where the houses are, you know, five, ten million dollars. And then there's this end and they're not far from it. They're eight, nine hundred thousand dollars and they have no yard. They have no yard. And the funny thing is, is they're in an area that when I was a kid growing up and I was, you know, because my family is also from this area, that would be like where the poor people lived. And now it's like, an area that my family who's had rental properties and have money say that they can't afford to move into the area anymore. And so I am just glad that I didn't sell my home when I had a lot of friends who were realtors years ago, people were always trying to get me to sell my property. Always, always telling me to sell my property, always telling me to stick the money into like the legal, the, the legal um, gambling on wall street to do all these sort of investor things. And in reality, I just needed to keep a roof over my head. And I, and I, you know, had been tempted into the idea of, you know, doing that and just renting and not having the stress. And we're seeing how rents are now. 
I'm kind of glad I didn't do that. So just, you know, we need to change our, our stories to young people. Anyway, that's my soapbox. Let me get out of here. If you haven't had a chance to hit the likes, hit the subs and all that good stuff, please go ahead. We've been here for hours. My dog is wanting to be fed and wondering what I'm up to. I cannot believe I've been here for so long. Ah, oh, I can't believe it. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Sophia Paris, thank you for coming in. My voice is starting to go downhill. So I'm going to bring up my brand music. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all just dropping in, stopping in, you know, just saying, hey, look out for tomorrow. We'll see what we're up to. Um, I may, will you see if Amberlyn, we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll do a circulation of the girlies. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. We'll see you all tomorrow. I'm going to take me off the stage and I'm going to uh, call it a dude.